All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a little vliggity vlog of sorts. Um, I guess this could be considered uh, my February 2016 update video, part trois, um, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, it kind of go. you know, I, I plan on going over a lot of uh, stuff that's been going on with, you know, personal life as well as YouTube life. So yeah, it's, it's an update video, I guess. You know, but uh, it's just, yeah, a lot of stuff's been happening to me lately, so let's go over it. And uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these little vlogs, uh, despite what you guys may have seen earlier. Um, and, you know, one of the things I've noticed about YouTube is it's, it's definitely like a, a habit or like a discipline in a way in that, you know, it's so easy to make videos when you're constantly making videos because you get into a rhythm, you get into a flow of how to do things and then once you get out of that flow it's so hard to get back into it and I, I don't know if you guys notice like you know when I take long breaks and like the first couple videos that I do back from those breaks I'm a little stilted and there's probably a little more jump cuts than normal you know as opposed to like when I'm just regular regularly talking in the English <laughs> hopefully um, I don't know maybe, maybe it's just me I'm not sure but uh, in any event uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about is something that happened fairly recently uh, over this past weekend in February 2016. So if you're watching this in the future, greetings. And uh, yeah, <laughs> all that stuff. So um, this past weekend there was a uh, mass shooting uh, here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Well, technically Kalamazoo is uh, a bit north of where I live. I live in Portage, which is uh, slightly south. I guess it's kind of like the suburbs of Kalamazoo, kind of sort of a little bit. Uh, I mean, in essence, I live in Kalamazoo, you know, just basically. So, <laughs> for all intents and purposes. Uh, but in any event, there was a, uh, a mass shooting that went on the, over this weekend. And, uh, you know, thankfully I was inside, so I'm, I'm totally fine. You know, they never came to this neighborhood, thankfully. And, you know, even if they did, I was inside my apartment here the whole time because I was busy working on videos and all that kind of stuff. So I guess it pays to be a recluse, you know, <laughs> sometimes anyway. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, my, my thoughts and everything go out to um, all those who were affected by all this. You know, they caught a, um, a suspect, a very... Uh, I don't know what the term is, like top level or very likely high suspect. I don't know. They caught someone who they think most likely did it. That's the terminology I can think of off the top of my head. So, um, you know, if he did do it, then you know, thankfully he's off the streets now and the authorities can deal with him accordingly. So, um, I haven't, you know, gotten any updates with it at the time of this recording, so... From what I've heard, he was arraigned today on Monday that I'm recording this. So, you know, hopefully just pay attention to Google News or whatever to get your uh, updates and stuff like that, you know. So, um, but anyway, my thoughts and all that are with those who are affected by the shooting. But this whole thing just kind of got me thinking about uh, my life back in America and just how um, unsafe it is here compared to other parts of the world, you know, namely Japan, where I used to live. And there's just, <laughs> as a friggin' ambulance and all that stuff is going by, you know, it kind of hammers the point home, right? But uh, in any event, it just, it just got me thinking, man, about um, all the differences between uh, living in America and living in Japan, and especially living in America, again, as a, as a returnee. Um, I guess that's what they call it, you know, someone who's been abroad for a while and decided to, you know, live back in their native country. Uh, there goes the dogs next door too, Jesus. I know this video's being made in less than ideal conditions, sorry about all that. Um, but I just wanted to get all this out there because it's been kind of weighing on my mind lately and, you know, I've been wanting to make videos again for so long, but I've just been so busy 
with uh, re-uploading everything from my old channel to my The Andy San channel and getting ready to launch that as my main channel and then begin the process of shutting down my Andy San channel. And it's just been a very draining process. But um, anyway, getting back to uh, the whole uh, living life in America again thing. And it's just, this whole shooting thing just kind of brought, you know, perspective uh, to me as far as um, just that it's not safe here. And I know that, you know, you're, you're not safe anywhere you go, but there are levels of safeness depending on where you live, you know, and it's just, America's just not safe anymore. And, uh, you know, no matter where I live, you know, even in my little hometown of Salina, Ohio, with, um, I think it has close to 10,000 people now, it's, you know, fairly small. I mean, yeah, there's smaller towns, but, you know, it's a pretty small town, all things considered. And it's rife with, you know, heroin, problems there's a big heroin drug ring going on that thankfully the police department's dealing with now you know they finally get on that now finally um and just you know drug crimes and all kinds of breaking and enterings and all that kind of stuff and it's like what the hell is going on what's happening and it's just hammering the point home that you know i thought coming back to america would help me out help me get back to my roots and figure out who I am and just help me get my shit together basically but you know ever since I've been back it's just been it's just been a struggle you know I mean there's obviously a lot of good things about being back in America you know a lot of the foods that I missed while I was over in Japan you know I have ready access to I have a car now because that's the thing in America you have to have a car to get anywhere you know, it's just, it's, it's not like in Japan where, you know, you can ride on a bike or just walk to the train station and then you can go anywhere in Japan, pretty much, if you have enough money, of course, but, you know, and the public transportation system is not quite as good. Although, you know, here in the bigger cities like Kalamazoo area, they have a, a fairly decent public transportation system, but, you know, I got a car, so I don't have to deal with it, you know, so, <laughs> that's my transportation system, but in any event, um, just, this, this whole thing just got me thinking, like, you know, what am I doing here, and just, you know, and also, like, college life isn't what I, uh, you know, college life the second time around, isn't uh, what I expected it to be. And yeah, I know, I shouldn't expect things, you know, just be appreciative of what happens. But, um, you know, it's just, it's so weird going back to college now because I've changed so much over these past couple of years. You know, I've experienced so much. And, um, you know, I thought that, you know, I'd be able to get back into college the same way in 2016 as I did in 2006, 2007. And it would just be like, you know, I hit the unpause button and I could get right back into it. But, you know, that's just not how things work. You know, I've changed so much over this past, you know, nine, almost 10 years since I left college the first time around. And, uh, you know, the landscape's changed so much. Um, because I remember when I was in college the first time around, um, online classes were starting to become a thing. You know, they had some, you know, some semblance of them, but the uh, software and everything they were using wasn't very good. Um, it was hard to communicate with teachers efficiently using those system to, systems because even back then, I remember, shit, even going back to the IT tech times where we had to do a couple online classes. Um, I was never very good at it. And, you know, it's hard to hold myself accountable for those online classes just because I didn't have anybody telling me, you know, hey, you got X assignment due this time, or hey, you know, check the online thing because your assignment's due in a couple days or something like that. Even if it's just a simple little 
throwaway line. You know, it's like, oh shit, you know, okay. Just make a note of it, you know, you're expected to go to e-learning and uh, figure it out for yourself. But now they have slightly better tools. It's still not what I ideally would like it to be, but the system has improved and um, I'm better at communicating with my teachers now than I was then just because, you know, I'm different, I guess, from back then. Because back then I was very, very passive, very go, go with the flow. And, uh, you know, I tried to do my best without talking to people. And, you know, now if something's going on, I can talk to people better. You know, I'm still not perfect in that regard. And there's a lot of things that are going on that I should talk to people about but I don't because I don't want to burden them with my problems and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, so there's that. And uh, you know, just going back to college the second time around, you know, being a, a 30 something, no longer a 20 something, even though I look fairly young and most people think, you know, man, maybe he's like a senior or something like that. You know, maybe he's like 21, 25 tops, which I mean is great, but just my whole mindset is different now from when I was that age. And like, I can't, it's hard for me to relate to those types of people anymore because a lot of their issues and what they're going through is stuff that I've already dealt with for the most part, you know, discovering who you are and trying to, you know, get your shit together as an adult, you know, how to, you know, pay the bills and, what to do in that regard and uh, a lot of that stuff I already have dealt with before and it's pretty much you can just set it on autopilot you know set it and forget it for the most part so um, and then you know just standard you know college drama you know it's just like high school plus pretty much which I don't get into that anymore and you know there's a lot of differences now you know, because when I was in college the first time around, I was actually like in college in college. Like I, did, I was in the dorms and stuff like that. So I was a bit more, you know, in the atmosphere, I guess. And you know, everything was so new to me at the time because I'd never lived away from my parents before that, that time period, you know, because before I was going to college, I was going to a tech school and uh, I basically commuted, you know, two, sometimes three times a week, depending on how many classes I had that quarter. And it was basically just like being back in high school, you know, like except my high school is very far away and, I, and I'd only have to go like a couple times a week. And uh, I worked a little bit more at McDonald's to, uh, you know, be able to afford the gas money to get over there and back and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but now, um, I'm very much a commuter, you know. It's kind of like being back at IT, IT Tech, which was the tech school I went to before, in that um, you don't really invest yourself so much into, you know, the, the student, so, you know, the student social groups at large. You pretty much just associate with whoever is in your class for the most part. That's kind of what I equate, equate uh, this, you know, time around to college as, is, you know, basically like whoever's in my class I can talk to and, you know, just goof off and have fun with or whatever the case may be. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they either go to their next class or they're done for the day and I go home. So that's that, you know, we don't hang out after class or anything like that it's just you know <laughs> we're there in the classroom and then outside it's whatever but um there are some classes that i do enjoy more than others um my japanese class being the number one um i'm making a lot of good strides a lot of good progress in that class you know it, it helps having been in japan for a couple of years you know you kind of know how to pronounce things better you kind of you know, know a bit more about the grammar and, you know, what certain things are and stuff like that. But that being said, you know, my Japanese was 
okay at best. You know, like I could answer questions, I could ask fairly simple questions. It was, you know, it was a little above survival Japanese. And it was, you know, pretty much enough for me to get by. But after a while, I kind of plateaued because I was in the English bubble for so long. You know, I was in the Navy, so we didn't really use a lot of Japanese while we were there because it's all in English for the most part. <laughs> depending on your rate and stuff like that, but it, and I digress. But, you know, majority of it was English. Um, the only time I had to practice or even use my Japanese was, you know, if I would go to the grocery store, or go to the restaurants or something like that, and I would order food or buy food or something like that. And that was pretty much it, really, you know. And, uh, you know, there's times I'd go out to Tokyo and stuff like that, and uh, I'd get a chance to use my Japanese. But I know a lot of uh, foreigner YouTubers, you know, the J-Vlog scene, one of their main complaints about, you know, them trying to use Jap Japanese in Tokyo or whatever is that all the, all the Japanese people want to do is talk English to you. But it, it's kind of funny because I had the exact opposite problem when I went out to Tokyo, because the foreign friends that I had were very fluent in Japanese, you know, much more so than I, you know, it was basically like, you know, they were able to converse, you know, fairly fluently, whereas I was like, Watashi wa Andy desu. Ah, oh, Andrew desu ka? Ah, oh, Andrew san. Oh yeah, you know, just whatever. So, you know, my Japanese was fairly basic, and I knew a couple words, so I kind of, you know, pepper in there, so I would I didn't look like a complete caveman, but still it was it wasn't it was nothing compared to my friends. So like, you know, they would see how, you know, fluent my friends were and they kinda of thought, Oh, this new guy, he must be fluent like them and they would just, you know, bah, 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 and just you know, I'd I'd maybe only understand like three or five words at a time at best. And plus like we go to clubs and stuff like that and music's really loud, so even if I could understand them, I couldn't really hear a damn thing they were saying anyway. Because it's just kind of a nightlife in Tokyo, I guess. You know, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. And again, that's another thing I really miss about living in Japan was the amount of friends I had. You know, and just the fact that I got to hang out with YouTube friends, which was a completely new concept to me. You know, because you know, before I moved to Japan, you know, the only friends I had were like friends I made in high school and college, pretty much. And maybe like some work-based friends, but it, except for a handful of them, like I never really hung out with them after work. It was pretty much like with my, you know, school friends at IT Tech, like, you know, we'd hang out and joke while we were in class or on break or whatever, but once class was over, like we'd, you know, <laughs> we'd go our separate ways and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so, but, you know, being in Japan, getting to hang out with YouTubers, you know, that I've known for years, you know, that I would, you know, make comments in their videos or send them personal messages or friend them on Facebook and stuff like that. And, you know, to get to know them and get to actually physically meet them in person, that was, you know, just amazing to me and get to hang out with them and kind of see how they are behind the scenes and, you know, maybe complain about some YouTube problems like, ah, oh, some little snot-nosed fuckhead called me fat and told me to kill myself on YouTube. Brr, 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 brr. You know, it's like, hey, me too! You know, because before I moved to Japan, you know, I was basically the YouTube guy to my friends. You know, they, they knew that I did YouTube and they knew that I did blogging and all that kind of stuff, so... They kind of figured, you know, that was my thing. And as much as I tried to get them in on it too, you know, maybe they did like a couple posts and that's about it really. So, you know, I was basically the YouTube guy. So I didn't really know anybody else that did YouTube aside from making like maybe a couple videos back in 2006 and being like, hey, I know what YouTube is. <laughs> I made this video of me throwing a ball at my bro's face. <laughs> You know, that's about it, really. You know, whereas I, you know, made my videos and made them on a fairly consistent basis, which is 
pretty amazing considering, you know, my work schedule and all that kind of stuff. You know, I tried, I tried my best to work around my Navy schedule and still, you know, upload videos on as consistent of a schedule as I could. You know, it wasn't a daily vlog thing, which wasn't really my thing to begin with anyway. But I just, I never uh, got to that, but still I was able to upload fairly consistently, you know, and at least like one up, one video a week at least, you know, for the most part. And I was able to do that, you know, my whole five year stint in the Navy, which is pretty amazing actually. When I sit down and think about it, you know, I remember when I was on uh, USS Kurtz, FFG 38, um, I remember sitting in <coughs> uh, one of the spaces, one of the sonar spaces, and uh, just working on videos, you know. I recorded a bunch of stuff while we were underway on deployment, and I was just putting it all together and stuff like that, and it was just, you know, kind of cool, and yeah, maybe I should have worked on some quals, but you know, this was my thing, this was my baby, you know. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this, but um, I know it's kind of <laughs> devolved in some, some kind of rant, freeform, word barf uh, vlog. But, you know, like I said at the beginning of this video, I got a lot of stuff going on in my head, a lot of stuff going on in my life that I want to get out. And I think it's very healthy to, you know, release those emotions and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, in addition to uh, just feeling unsafe in America with all the shootings and stuff like that happening so close to home, it's not like, you know, oh, obviously there are shootings in LA and New York City. I mean, duh, it's a big city. Of course that stuff's gonna happen. You know, having that kind of stuff happen, you know, in some people's cases, literally in their backyard, it's like, what the fuck am I doing here? What am I doing here? And you know, I know that there's some people out there, I'm not gonna name names, but there's some people asking me, you know, man, I bet you regret getting out of the Navy and moving back to America, huh? And you know, I do wanna make a, a video going a bit, a bit deeper into the subject because it's kind of a, you know, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, yeah, it sucks I got out of the Navy, whatever. You know, it's not as black and white as that. You know, it's a little more gray. <laughs> but um, I guess like the long and short of it is, you know, I don't regret getting out of the Navy because, you know, the Navy was never a long-term career choice for me, you know, since the day I started. I knew that I was gonna do my time, when I was done, get out, go back to college. That was the plan, right? And I did that. <laughs> I did my time. I mean, I got out a little bit earlier than expected, but I still got out, got my honorable discharge, got my DD-214, honorably, and I'm here going back to college. So um, everything should be good, right? But uh, I don't know, it's just a lot of things, you know, it just wasn't really what I thought it was gonna be. And, uh, you know, I don't regret getting out of the Navy because at that point in my career, you know, especially once I made second class, I was kind of at the precipice of this decision of, you know, I could re-enlist and then, you know, hopefully make, you know, work my way towards STG-1, then later STGC, and, you know, if I wanted to go up from there or just retire at STGC, you know, that's on me. But like that was the basic long-term uh, career path that I was looking at, you know, and especially since I made SCG2 so quickly. I, I only, I made, I made second E5 for, you know, those who don't know, in like two years and five months. On the Kurtz during that promotion cycle, I was the fastest to get promoted to second there. I beat out an FC by two months. <laughs> so, you know, that was pretty cool. And I was the first of my, um, not the first of my boot camp class, because there was like two or three others that made second before me on that, on that part. But I did manage to beat out everybody in my A school class and my C school class to make in second. So, you know, I was really proud of that. So, 
Uh, but, you know, ever since I left the Kurtz, it was just, um, I didn't really know what my place was. I knew that uh, Lassen, you know, the people in Lassen wanted me to step up as a second class and assume leadership and, you know, discipline the, uh, the division and stuff like that, deal with paperwork and maintenance scheduling and work center soup stuff. But it just, you know, I had to sit down and think about it because that wasn't really my strong suit. And the whole thing was the Navy wanted once, you know, all around good sailors. You know, they don't want people who are subject matter experts at their rate. They don't want people who are really good at their job. They want people that are good at all the jobs, you know, that are, that know everything about their rate, that, you know, do command collaterals, they do stuff outside of the command, you know, they're one of those hard charger alpha male or alpha female types, you know, no bait is allowed, you know, Mr. or Mrs. get her done type, you know, go get her person. And that's really not me. I'm not Mr. Alpha male, you know, I, I'm very much a laid back kind of, you know, if something were to go wrong, I would approach the person one-on-one -on -one rather than, you know, try to discipline them or correct them in front of people. Um, I don't really like confrontation. It's just a lot of these things added up and uh, I just, I just didn't like where my career was going in the Navy at that point. And I just, I became frustrated with it. You know, I, I became trapped by it. Because, you know, and it was so uh, depressing to go through that because here I was in Japan, the place that I wanted to be since I was a little kid. You know, since my cousins went off and you know, told me so many good things about Japan and shared their stories about it and mailed me back stuff from Japan. It was just so cool and so different. And here I was actually living that. I was actually in Japan. I had an apartment that overlooked Tokyo Bay. I got to see the sunrise over the ocean every morning, you know, when the sun rose. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up super early, but you know, you guys know what I mean. And, uh, I was just so fortunate, but I just, I wasn't satisfied. You know, I thought that, you know, it was great being there the first couple of weeks or whatever, but you know, once I had accomplished that, I wanted to do something career-wise, but it just, I was just so unsatisfied being in the Navy, you know, especially at that point. And, uh, you know, I liked the people in my division for the most part. And I liked the people on the ship. I just didn't like where they wanted my career to go because everybody's career path was very uh, scripted. You know, it was a one size fits all, basically, you know. Okay, you're an E5, you need to get these qualifications and you need to be this type of person. And if you want to make E6, you know, that's how you do it. And then you gotta be more of this person. You gotta be super leadership man, dude, girl, person. And then, you know, that's how you make the E7 and so on and so forth. And it was, it's very scripted. And that's not something I wanted to be a part of. And, you know, it also didn't help that the operation tempo, the op tempo was so high, you know, with China and North Korea acting fools on a consistent basis, you know, and us getting the call late at night Hey, we're getting underway in 24 hours. You know, you better get your stuff and come on over. You know, I got plans that weekend. Well, you know, <laughs> so is North Korea. So, and just having that stress of always being basically on call in case something went down, you know, it was so stressful. And I had to cancel so many plans with my friends and they thought I was such a fucking flake because of it. And I felt so bad because I don't like flaking out of my friends, you know. But, you know, when duty calls, I guess. And, uh, but in any event, I just, I was not satisfied being in the Navy. But um, on, the other, on the other side of that, I loved being in Japan. I mean, sure, it, had its down, it has its downsides, like every place, you know, even America has its downsides. 
Um, but for the most part, I loved being in Japan. I loved, you know, where I was. I loved being near the ocean. You know, the Japanese people are kind of a mixed bag depending on where I went, but for the most part, they're very nice, very polite. They never bothered me that much for the most part. I mean, there was a couple incidents here and there, but it was pretty forgivable in the grand scheme of things. It was just, you know, weird drunk salarymen being weird drunk salarymen. You know, what you gonna do? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I really miss Japan. And uh, I especially miss my friends out there as well. And uh, yeah, so hopefully I can get back there someday. You know, either as a study abroad student, which is something I'm working on right now. I can't do it until, you know, I've established myself more as a student at Western. You know, get a good GPA, get some classes under my belt saying, you know, see, this guy knows the Japanese, this guy's got such and such GPA, yeah, let's send him abroad, cool. You know, I can't, I can't start my freshman year and be like, yeah, I want to go to Japan! <laughs> You know, that's, that's not how it works. But um, I plan on uh, doing like a study abroad program my sophomore year, second year. So sometime next year is when I plan on doing a study abroad program. Now, um, there are several programs that they offer. There's the year long program, which ideally I would like, but there's also um, summer programs as well, which Considering I just, you know, re-upped on my lease here until uh, Feb, uh, until, sorry, uh, March of uh, 2017, you know, I can't break my lease until then, you know, without suffering the consequences. And I don't have the money to pay for that. So um, I'll be here for the next 12 months at least. So yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess the plan moving forward is to hopefully get a year long a scholarship to go over to one of the universities that Western has a partnership with. They have partnership with so many other places. Um, but, you know, the partnership that they have with those universities um, makes it easier for me to get in there and to get scholarships to go there and to have money while I'm there. Because, you know, like I said, the GI Bill only goes so far and I'm not sure how much if any at all, it covers for study abroad programs. That's something I'm gonna have to look into and stuff like that. So, you know, again, <laughs> it's the reason I'm doing it my sophomore year and obviously not my freshman year. So, you know, it's, it's gonna take some time to figure out everything and get everything all, you know, put in line. But uh, just know that I am looking to come back to Japan at some point, whether that is through a study abroad program or maybe after I graduate from college and can go up there to teach English to the kids. Uh, I want to continue with this video, but I could see that ba my battery for all the things is dying and I have so much more to tell you guys. But um, I guess that's just where, where we'll leave it here for now. And uh, yeah, so that said, this is the Andy san It's not for now. They can you guys poop for tuning in to this rambly video i guess this wasn't so much of an update video after all um it's just uh rambly blah <laughs> so um thank you guys for tuning in this video and for uh, watching my stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye